listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 185. We are continuing in the book of 2 Kings. Now, there's a lot of names and places and moving parts. You may need to get a piece of paper out and start writing down names and keeping track of all the different moving parts. So for myself, I took a plain sheet of paper. I divided it in half with Israel at the top and Judah at the bottom. So what you really need to know here is that this is all a battle of kings. That's right. Long before Game of Thrones, the Bible was already doing these complicated movements of kingdoms and armies. So in Israel, you have Queen Jezebel, and she's been there for a long time. Many of the kings have died during her reign. So you have in Israel Queen Jezebel. Then you have King Joram. Then moving down to Judah, you have King Ahaziah. So Joram and Ahaziah team up to fight the king of Aram, and that's King Haziel. We saw him in the last episode. Remember, the Aramites are outside Israel and Judah, so they are a constant threat. So by the time we get to 2 Kings chapter 9 in this episode, this is what we have. We have the two kings, Joram of Israel and Ahaziah of Judah. Both of them are in the same city of Jezreel. All of Israel and Judah are evil. Because both of those kings, King Joram and King Ahaziah, are both evil. And so it's time to clean house. And so God basically picks a new king of Israel. And his name is Jehu. And Elisha, he's the only prophet who speaks to God. He's going to go over there and anoint Jehu and tell him, Hey, you're king of Israel. Now remember, King Joram is the actual king of Israel. And he's over there in the city of Jezreel, not even knowing that this guy named Jehu was anointed king. So here comes Jehu with his little army on his way to the city of Jezreel. And the guards see Jehu coming. And they don't know if he wants war or peace, but he's got a lot of supporters and a little small army with him. And so what you're going to see is the interaction between the current king of Israel, King Joram, versus the new king of Israel, King Jehu. So hopefully that will make a little more sense to you as we move forward. We are also continuing in the book of Acts. And the Romans are just trying to get a grasp of what's going on around here. So they take Paul and they're basically going through the motions and moving him through the bureaucratic process, they're going to punish him. But once they find out he's a Roman citizen, they now have to enact due process. So the commander of the Romans is now writing a letter to the Roman governor where they eventually send Paul to stand before and answer to. So Paul's basically being shuffled around the Roman justice system Remember, the Romans are the only ones who retain the power to execute people. But first, the person has to be convicted of a crime. What crime has Paul committed? That's exactly what the Roman governor and Roman commander are trying to figure out. The Jewish leaders already know the crimes he's guilty of, but those are religious crimes. They have no bearing on Roman law. So what will be decided? It will be interesting to find out. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. 2 Kings chapter 8, verses 16 to 29. Jehoram begins his rule. 
Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, was the king of Judah. He began to rule in the fifth year that Joram, son of Ahab, was king of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he began to rule. He ruled for eight years in Jerusalem. He was a wicked king and did the same evil things that the other kings of Israel had done. He was as wicked as King Ahab and his family. In fact, Jehoram married one of Ahab's daughters. He did what the Lord says is evil. But because of his promise to David, the Lord would not destroy Judah. He promised that someone from David's family would always rule as king. In Jehoram's time, Edom broke away from Judah's rule. The people of Edom chose a king for themselves. So Jehoram went with all his chariots to attack Zair. The Edomite army surrounded them. But during the night, Jehoram and his chariot commanders attacked the Edomites and were able to escape. But all of Jehoram's soldiers ran away to their homes. Since that time, the Edomites have been free from Judah's rule. At about the same time, Libna also broke away from Judah. All the things Jehoram did are recorded in the book, the history of the kings of Judah. When Jehoram died, he was buried among his ancestors in the city of David. Jehoram's son, Ahaziah, became the new king after him. Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, became the king of Judah in the twelfth year that Joram, son of Ahab, was king of Israel. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he began to rule. He ruled for one year in Jerusalem. His mother was Athaliah, the daughter of King Omri of Israel. Ahaziah did what the Lord says is evil. He did many bad things, just as the people from Ahab's family had done. He lived like this because his wife was from Ahab's family. Joram is hurt in the war against Haziel. Joram was from Ahab's family. Haziel went with Joram to fight against King Haziel of Aram at Ramoth Gilead. The Arameans wounded Joram. King Joram went back to Israel so that he can get well from those wounds. He went to the area of Jezreel. Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, was the king of Judah. Ahaziah went to Jezreel to see Joram. 2 Kings chapter 9 Elisha the prophet called one of the men from the group of prophets and said to him, Get ready and take this small jar of oil in your hand. Go to Ramoth Gilead, and when you arrive, find Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. Take him to a private room away from the others there. Take the jar and pour the oil on Jehu's head. Say, this is what the Lord says. I have anointed you to be the new king over Israel. Then open the door and run away as fast as you can. So this young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. When the young man arrived, he saw the army officers sitting together. He said, Officer, I have a message for you. Jehu asked. Which one of us is the message for? The young man said. For you, sir. Jehu got up and went into the house. Then the young prophet poured the oil on Jehu's head and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I am anointing you to be the new king over the Lord's people Israel. You must destroy the family of Ahab, your king. In this way, I will punish Jezebel for the deaths of my servants, the prophets, and for the deaths of all the Lord's servants who were murdered. So all of Ahab's family will die. I will not let any male child in Ahab's family live. It doesn't matter if that male child is a slave or a free person in Israel. I will make Ahab's family like the family of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the family of Basha, son of Ahijah. The dogs will eat Jezebel in the field at Jezreel, and she will not be buried. 
Then the young prophet opened the door and ran away. Jehu went back to his king's officers. One of the officers said to Jehu, Is everything all right? Why did this crazy man come to you? Jehu answered the servants, You know the man, the crazy things he says. The officer said, No, we don't. Tell us the truth. What did he say? Jehu finally told them that the prophet had said, This is what the prophet says. I have anointed you, the new king of Israel. Then each officer quickly took his robe off and put it on the steps in front of Jehu. Then they blew the trumpet and made the announcement. Jehu is king! So Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, made plans to kill King Joram, who was now in Jezreel. Joram had gone to Jezreel to heal from injuries he had suffered in a battle at Ramoth Gilead. He had gone there with the Israelite army to defend the city against King Haziel of Aram. So Jehu told the officers, If you agree that I am the new king, don't let anyone escape from the city to tell the news in Jezreel. So Jehu got in his chariot and went to Jezreel to find Joram while he was still there resting. King Ahaziah of Judah had also come to Jezreel to see Joram. A watchman was standing on the tower in Jezreel. He saw Jehu and his troops coming. He shouted to Joram, I see some troops coming, Joram said. Send someone on a horse to meet them and ask if they come in peace. So Messenger rode a horse out to meet Jehu. The Messenger said, King Joram says, Do you come in peace? Jehu said, Peace is not for you to worry about. Follow behind me. The watchman called out to Joram, The Messenger has reached them, but he is not coming back. Then Joram sent out a second Messenger on a horse. This man came to Jehu and said, King Joram says, do you come in peace? Jehu answered, Peace is not for you to worry about. Follow behind me. Again, the watchman called out to Joram. The second messenger has reached them, but he is not coming back either. But there is a man driving his chariot uh, like a madman. It must be Jehu, son of Nimshi, Joram said. Get me my chariot. So the servant got Joram's chariot. Both King Joram of Israel and King Ahaziah of Judah got their chariots and went out to meet Jehu. They met him at the property of Naboth from Jezreel. Joram saw Jehu and asked, Do you come in peace, Jehu? Jehu answered, There is no peace as long as the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother, Jezebel, continues. Joram turned the horses to run away and shouted, It's a trick, Ahaziah! But Jehu grabbed his bow and shot Joram in the back. The arrow went through Joram's heart, and he fell down dead in his chariot. Jehu said to his chariot driver, Bidkar, Take Joram's body and throw it into the field of Naboth from Jezreel. Remember, when you and I rode together with Joram's father, Ahab, the Lord said this would happen to him. The Lord said, Yesterday I saw the blood of Naboth and his sons, and I, the Lord, am telling you that I will punish Ahab in this field. So take Joram's body and throw it into the field, just as the Lord said. King Ahaziah of Judah saw what was happening and tried to escape on the road to Beth Hagen. But Jehu followed him, shouting, Kill him too! So his troops shot Ahaziah in his chariot on the road to Ger near Iblium. He got as far as Megiddo. 
he died there. Ahaziah's servants carried his body in a chariot to Jerusalem. They buried him in the tomb of his ancestors in the city of David. Ahaziah had become king over Judah during Joram's 11th year as king of Israel. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard the news. She put her makeup on and fixed her hair. Then she stood by the window and looked out. Jehu entered the city. Jezebel said, Hello, you Simri. You killed your master just as he did. Jehu looked up at the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked out at Jehu. And Jehu said, Throw Jezebel down. So the eunuchs threw her down. Some of her blood splashed on the wall and the horses that trampled her body. Jehu went into the house and ate and drank. Then he said, Now, see about this cursed woman. Bury her, because she is a king's daughter. The men went to bury Jezebel. They could not find her body. They could only find her skull, her feet and the palms of her hands. When the men came back and told Jehu, he said, This is what the Lord said would happen when he spoke to his servant Elijah the Tishbite. Dogs will eat the body of Jezebel in the field of Jezreel. All that is left of her body will be scattered like manure on the field at Jezreel. No one will be able to tell that it was her. Acts chapter 23, verses 12 to 35. The next morning, some of the Jews made a plan to kill Paul. They made a promise to God that they would not eat or drink anything until they had killed him. There were more than 40 of them who made this plan. They went and talked to the leading priests and the older leaders. But they said, we have promised ourselves that we will not eat or drink until we have killed Paul. So this is what we want you to do. Send a message to the commander from you and the high council. Tell him you want him to bring Paul out to you. Say that you want to ask him more questions. We will be waiting to kill him while he is on the way here. But Paul's nephew heard about this plan. He went to the army building and told Paul, then Paul called one of the army officers and said to him, Take this young man to the commander. He has a message for him. So the army officer brought Paul's nephew to the commander. The officer said, The prisoner Paul asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The commander led the young man to a place where they could be alone. The commander asked, what do you want to tell me? The young man said, Some Jews have decided to ask you to bring Paul down to their council meeting tomorrow. They want you to think that they plan to ask Paul more questions. But don't believe them. More than 40 of them are hiding and waiting to kill him. They have all promised to God not to eat or drink until they have killed him. Now they are waiting for you to say yes. The commander sent the young man away, telling him, Don't tell anyone. You have told me about their plan. Then the commander called two army officers. He said to them, I need some men to go to Caesarea. Get 200 soldiers ready. Also, get 70 soldiers on horses and 200 men to carry spears. Be ready to leave at 9 o'clock tonight. Get some horses for Paul to ride so that he can be taken to Governor Felix safely. The commander wrote a letter about Paul. This is what it said. From Claudius Lysias to the most honorable Governor Felix. Greetings. Some Jews had taken this man and planned to kill him, but I learned that he is a Roman citizen, so I went with my soldiers and saved him. I wanted to know why they were accusing him so I brought him before their council meeting. 
This is what I learned. The Jews said this man did some things that were wrong. These changes were about their own Jewish laws, and there was nothing worthy of jail or death. I was told that some of the Jews were making a plan to kill him, so I decided to send him to you. I also told those Jews to tell you what they have against him. The soldiers did what they were told. They got Paul and took him to the city of Antipatris that night. The next day, the soldiers on horses went with Paul to Caesarea, but the other soldiers went back to the army building in Jerusalem. The soldiers on horses entered Caesarea, gave the letter to Governor Felix, and then turned Paul over to him. The governor read the letter. He asked Paul where he was from and learned that he was from Cilicia. The governor said, I hear your case when the Jews who are accusing you come here too. Then the governor gave orders for Paul to be kept in Herod's palace. Psalm chapter 80 verses 1 through 7. From the music director to the tune, Lilies of the Agreement, a psalm of Asaph. Shepherd of Israel, listen to us. You lead your people like sheep. You sit on your throne above the winged creatures. Shine like a light for us to see. Show your greatness to the tribes of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Come and save your people. God, make us as strong as we were before. Smile down on us and save us. Lord God, all-powerful, when will you listen to our prayers? How long will you be angry with us? Instead of bread and water, you gave your people tears. You made us the target of everyone's hatred. Our enemies make fun of us. God, all-powerful, make us as strong as we were before. Smile down on us and save us. Thank you, everyone. That was day 185. Join us for day 186. We're continuing in the book of 2 Kings. Jehu writes to the leaders of Samaria, and the leaders of Samaria kill Ahab's children. Jehu kills Ahaziah's relatives and then meets Jehonadab, then calls on the worshippers of Baal. Then Athaliah kills the king's sons in Judah. Jehoiada makes Joash king, who is only seven years old. And in the book of Acts, charges are filed against Paul by the Roman government. Then Paul defends himself before the Roman governor, Felix, and then speaks to not only him, but, but Felix's wife. But will it be enough to bring out a favorable outcome for Paul? We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.